Return tracks, what are they? Let's talk about them. Return tracks are a nice and useful tool inside of Ableton, and they are essentially a placeholder for plugins that we wanna use throughout a session multiple times. So I'm gonna open up this session that I worked on the other day. I had a vocal recording session for a track that I'm working on right now with one of my buddies. But the thing I wanna do when it comes to the mixing process and the comping of this track, meaning going through all of these different takes and making sure that I get the best vocal for each line as possible, is I wanna be efficient. And not only do I wanna be efficient, but I also wanna make sure that my computer is efficient, that the CPU is using to its best purposes. So what I wanna show you guys real quick is inside of here, I have my recording track up at the top and I have this vocal chain here. Now this vocal chain is filled of five different plugins that make up what I use to track my vocals, to record my vocals. Now, if I were to copy and paste this on every of these different tracks, meaning my playback track, meaning every different place that is essentially a placeholder for the takes that I record, it would beat up my computer a little bit. And it might also, you know, wear on me when it comes to, did I have this plug in here? When he, my artist, asked me to play this track, is it gonna play properly? Well, let's talk about how we can make this a little bit easier for ourselves. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom of my session at the bottom of my arrangement view, and I'm gonna see that I have this track here that is called my master. Now the master is going to be the end of the chain of where all of your sounds, all of your tracks are gonna go through. But right above it, we have this little empty space. And if I secondary click or right click right above it, we're gonna see the options of the tracks that we're gonna be able to put here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit return track. And now we have this little placeholder, this little placeholder track for all of the different plugins that I wanna use for multiple things. So think of it this way. If you had a, you know, a big percussive group inside of the track that you're working on and you have one reverb mixed the same way on each track, instead of copying and pasting that on every track, we could put it in this little placeholder and tell our tracks to go through it. And that's essentially what we're gonna do right now. So as soon as I insert this return track, we're gonna notice that we have all these little boxes that pop up on our options of each track that shows negative infinity. And if we wanna see that real quick again, I can delete this and it's gone. And if I hit insert return track, it pops back up. Now what this means, this negative infinity is saying we are sending zero, negative infinity, the utmost zero of that sound processed through that return track. So none of it is going through at this point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to that main vocal chain that I have. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to go down to my return track and I'm going to paste the same chain, that same effect into my audio effects spot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call it vocal chain. So I know what is going where I'm going to lower this now by hitting command option L because I'm on a Mac. And now I can see again on all of these different tracks here, I have that negative infinity means, which means that I can route any of those tracks to that chain. So for instance, let's listen to this and let's understand what this track sounds like. So I'm going to go back to my playback um, track, which is where I immediately record into my recording section and then put it down into my playback so the artist can hear it. I'm going to solo this. And I'm gonna also solo my beat. I'm gonna solo both of these by holding command while I click on the S. And we're gonna sound, or we're gonna sound, we're gonna listen to what this sounds like. Now, if I didn't have this effect on, and I can turn off this whole um, audio effect rack by pressing this yellow circle in the top left hand corner of that we will hear the difference of it being turned off and a lot is missing there because we're not hearing that compression we're not hearing all those different little tools that i have put on to it but what happens if i delete this in general 
Now it's completely gone. That audio effect is not there. But again, we have it now down in this vocal chain at our bottom, that return track at the bottom of our arrangement. We have this place to send it to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to that playback track and I'm gonna start mixing in. I'm gonna start raising that from negative infinity all the way up to zero, meaning as full as it can go. And we're gonna see that come back into life and how it sounds. The other thing we know is when it's going through there, we actually see on the right hand side of that vocal chain, we see the meter I told you, I told showing us that we have audio coming through it. So essentially now, instead of, you know, auditioning all of these different clips to find the best take and, you know, making sure that they sound properly by having that vocal chain pasted on every single track, which again, might eat up that CPU of my computer. I can have it in one place where I can send them to. I hope this helped. I hope this made things maybe a little bit clearer to you. I know for me, I kind of get lost in between all of the different programs and know how things are done in Pro Tools or know how things are done in Fruity Loops or know how things are done in Ableton. And maybe it takes me a second sometimes to get caught up with my own workflow. And so a session like this, the process of going about this and making it again a little bit easier on myself was very useful and I'm glad that I'm able to share those lessons that I'm learning with you guys. If you have any questions about return tracks or maybe anything in regards to the finishing of this track, you let me know and I will be sure to respond. If you have any ideas for new quick tips here in the future, also leave that down in the comments below and I will be sure to stay with you guys and keep you posted. I will be finishing this track and I will be recording the whole session of me comping, again, me going through and trying to find the best vocal from each take. So if you guys want to see that video coming soon, feel free to subscribe and see when that comes out. Again, thanks for checking this out. Hope you guys are doing good and I will see you soon.